Well, it's about that time to talk about the long-standing tradition of Bellator versus UFC. What? Every now and again in the MMA world, these fucking hipster idiots come out of the woodwork and says, oh, Bellator's better. It happened when the UFC was dominating and Pride was better. I will say probably Pride maybe had some more better talent, but we all know what happened with that. Pride got sold. UFC bought Pride, bought the fighters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then Strikeforce. Strikeforce was the new king. Strikeforce was... They had better fighters. They have all these guys. Now, Strike Force, again, they had some talent. They came out of the UFC, did pretty well. But UFC is king in my world. Lately, online, on MMA Twitter, there's these people, mainly Bellator fighters. I think Bellator fighters are the better fighters. Are you fucking serious? Bellator fighters are, without question, most of them, not all of them, most of them are UFC flakeouts. This all started because Ryan Bader was considered the best 205 pounder in the world since John Jones moved up to heavyweight, and that is absolutely ridiculous. I have proof for that. We're going to go through, I'm going to bring up some tweets. They're actually insane to me. Um, the Pitbull brothers getting involved ever since Michael Chandler now is leaving. Possibly, I don't think he'll resign with Bellator. Doesn't mean he's coming to the UFC, but it is banana land that these Bellator fighters think that they are better than the UFC. It's crazy to me. Listen, if you want to make money, that's fine. Every fighter should get paid billions of dollars, in my opinion. Make as much money as you want. But when you resign with a second-rate company, and then after you beat the guy that you just beat four fucking times because there's no one for you to fight, don't go on a press conference and go, oh, well, I think I could beat Conor McGregor. You had your shot. You had your chance to come to the UFC and prove it. You failed. You failed miserably, okay? So let's get to some of these tweets here. First tweet. Let me move myself out of the way. I fought uh, Patricky Pitbull. This is the older Pitbull brother, right? This isn't Patricio. This is Patricky. He's got nine nine losses on his uh, record, okay? I fought seven fighters who had previously been in the UFC. One a former UFC WC champion, and four had been in the top 5, 10, plus one former WC champion. I beat them all and finished seven of the eight. Please enlighten me how UFC fighters are superior to Bellator MMA. Good question, Pitbull. Uh, not really. Listen, you beat Josh Thompson, who was like 50, okay? He was the WC champion like a million years ago. Congratulations, you finished him. You also beat Benson Henderson by split decision. And if memory serves, because it always does, if memory serves, I don't know if you won that fight, my friend. I don't know if you won that fight, if I'm being completely honest with you. Also, Benson Henderson beat your brother when he broke his leg or twisted his ankle or fucking jammed his toe, whatever happened to him. Listen, I understand fighters have egos. I understand that fighters want to be considered the best in the world. Bellator is getting shit on right now. I could text a buddy of mine who knows a little bit about MMA, and I'd be like, hey, what do you think about Ryan Bader? Do you think he's the best 205-pounder in the world? He's going to go, who? What? And I bet it drives these Bellator fighters crazy when they go, oh, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a, I'm a world champion. Oh, and what? Oh, MMA. Also, like UFC stuff. Yeah, kind of. But not for the UFC, for Bellator. And people go, okay, yeah. Like, I've never heard it. Sure, you're a world champion, but okay. All right. This next one here uh, by Patricio. This is the older brother. Lightweight and featherweight, me. So the uh, ESPN put out a little thing that was breaking down UFC versus um, Bellator champions, right? There, you'll see it at the bottom half here. We are going to look at the full thing. So don't worry about it. But I'm going to read the tweet first. Lightweight and featherweight, me. Middleweight and welterweight, Douglas. Heavyweight, uh, Stipe. Light heavyweight, Nekwaf. WFA can do go either way. I don't know. Women's featherweight can go either way. Go either way. Go either way. Nunez knocked out Cyborg. Go either way. Bantamweight, Archuleta Mix. Flyweight, Valentina. And as I said, I'll be bet one million a day on myself. Okay, so let's go to the list here, okay? Let's do it. Champ versus champ, right? Obviously, they're going to start in the 145-pound division. Patricio Pitbull is actually the two-division champ, 145 and 155. So they got to max up with Alexander Volkanovsky. Patricio Pitbull has never blown me away. I think he is a talented fighter. I would like to see him fight in the UFC. I'm not saying that. I think he deserves a fight in the UFC. He's fought some really top guys. I mean, he's finished Eddie, uh, excuse me, he's finished Michael Chandler. He's got some good wins out there. But against Alexander Volkanovsky, after seeing what Alexander did to Max Holloway, 
Patricio is fairly small. I don't know how he would beat Alexander. Um, he's definitely not going to have the wrestling aspect. He's maybe going to have the speed. That's actually a very close fight, in my opinion. I'll be honest, right? I would just shit all over Bellator. Patricio versus Alexander, that's a pretty close fight. Then you got Amanda and Cyborg. Mate, toss up. Cyborg destroyed, or excuse me, Nunez. Fuck, I almost fucked up. Nunez destroyed Cyborg. I mean, knocked her the fuck out, right? And what happened again, Nunez is the best female fighter of all time. I said it. I know you don't like it, but it's true. She beat Cyborg 10 times out of 10. I'm convinced of it. And this is coming from a gambler who picked Cyborg to win that fight. That's how embarrassing that is. Next up, you got Petra Jan versus Juan Archuleta and uh, Patchy Mix. First off, Juan Archuleta stinks, right? The guy does nothing, right? He does literally no action, no movement. What, what is he going to do with Petrion? Petrion, I don't think, is the best band weight in the UFC. I think it's Aljamain Sterling. I think it's uh, fucking Sean. I think Sean O'Malley beats both these guys. And you know how I feel about Sean O'Malley. But Petrion would smoke both these guys. Patchy Mix. Is I'm saying this right? Patchy Mix. Patchy Mix. I'm going to be honest with you. I've only seen the guy fight one or, one or two times. Juan Archuleta has never impressed me. He's in shape. Trains with TJ Dillashaw. But he lose the Petrion. He lose the Aljamain Sterling. He lose the Pedro Munoz. He might even lose to Frankie Edgar. Yeah, I fucking said it. Next up, Valentina versus uh, Lima La Macavacla, blah, 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 the Hawaiian chick. Can't pronounce her name. I mean, let's not even, we don't even have to go here, right? I mean, Valentina, the bullet is a fucking savage. Don't even have to go there. Okay, next up, heavyweights, Steve Bader versus Ryan Bader. I mean, listen, Ryan Bader, we're going to go over his record in a minute because this is what started the whole thing. Um, listen, Ryan Bader. Just got knocked out by a serious Russian light heavyweight, okay? I think Ryan Bader should never went to 205 again. I think he should have stayed at heavyweight. But who is he beating at heavyweight? We'll get to his record, but clearly Stipe knocks out Ryan Bader. Ryan Bader has a little bit of a chin issue, if you haven't noticed. And uh, there's no way he's out wrestling Stipe if DC couldn't out wrestle Stipe. Yeah. I'm going to take Stipe. Light heavyweight. Dom Razor, Jan Belovers, Vadim Nekov. Vadim Nekov, little fun fact, lost to my boy, Yuri Prasaka. Uh, Yuri Prasaka. Something, something you think about there. I think he's made leaps and bounds. I think he's strong. Trains a Fedor, uh, Fedor, Fedor, whatever. Um, listen, Dom Razor, Jan Belovers, again, this is going to be close. I think Dom Reyes beats Vadim. I think maybe he, he gets Jan, right? I think Dom's going to be too... Um, too athletic, but really, if we're if we're going to war, if the UFC and Bellator are going to war, you're putting John Jones at 205 and letting him fight this Russian cat. I mean, he hasn't left 205 yet, right? If we're doing super fights and we're doing my company versus your company, you're putting John Jones at 205 and he's beating all three of these guys. The goat, baby. And I don't love John Jones, but he the goat. Next up, Izzy versus Gagar Mousasi versus Douglas Lima. I mean, Douglas Lima, he's even fought at 185 yet. Douglas Lima has a loss to Matt Brown. I think Lima is a talented guy. I've wanted to see him over in the UFC for a while. But at 170, not 185, my boy Izzy makes quick work of Gagar and Lima. If they fight, Lima's a striker. Izzy pieces him up. Gagar Mousasi, again, he had to go to Bellator to win a, win a title. Or, yeah, win a title. I mean, listen, he couldn't cut it over in the UFC. He was, he was losing to some top guys. Um, yeah, Izzy, Izzy runs through him. Izzy runs through him. Pink hair and all, baby. Izzy runs through him. And then you got Kamaru Usman versus Douglas Lima. I like that fight. That's a close fight. It's another close fight because I do like Lima. Listen, Kamaru's my guy. He's a good wrestler. He's he's big. He's strong. Um, I think he can get the done. I mean, listen, Lima lost to Ben Askren uh, with, with the wrestling. I think Kamar Usman can emulate that. I think he can take Lima down whenever he wants. Lima's got crazy leg kicks, got good power, is in shape, and is a legit guy. I want to see him come out of the UFC and really uh, get his chops on with some of the best in the world. But I'm going to lean Usman in that fight. Then, obviously, the 205. Uh, Khabib versus Patricio. And Patricio thinks he can beat Khabib, which is laughable. I think Khabib is the second best fighter in the world behind uh, John Jones right now. Uh, Khabib makes short work. Khabib finishes him, takes him down, chokes him out. Easy peasy. Now, this all started because of Ryan Bader. A lot of people said, oh, Ryan Bader now is the king at 205. Let's take a look at his record, okay? Let's take a look at his record just just because. Just because we can. So you got... Vladimir uh, Nevkov, who got knocked out in the second round, right? Had an okay first round, one, got a takedown. And then he's won a bunch of fights in a row. A lot of people are like, oh, wow, look at all these fights in a row. Okay, Fedor, he's like 50, right? I mean, Fedor's a legend. If he beat Pride Fedor, I'd be fucking screaming for the rooftops for Ryan Bader. He didn't beat Pride Fedor, okay? He beat Fedor with fucking five losses or four losses now. Uh, Matt Mitrione, 
Enough said. Matt Mitrione. Enough said. Mahal, uh, King Mo, Muhammad, uh, Muhammad Lawal. Um, again, guy who's retired, has no knees, like plastic knees. Congratulations, right? You fucking knocked out, knocked him out quick in the first round. A lot of people have done that as well. King Mo's not what he used to be. Linton Vessel, um, that's like Bellator's guy. He's been there from like day one. Uh, and it wasn't, uh, you know, he's not that great, right? He's not gonna, he's not gonna crack the top 10 in the UFC. I don't even think he's top 10 in fucking Bellator, but I don't think Bellator has, uh, 10 fighters. Those first three fights at his name were all at heavyweight, by the way. Phil Davis, good win. I like Phil Davis. Phil Davis is an interesting cat, good wrestling, athletic, um, strong. He split decision win. That's a good win. That's a good win for Ryan Bader. Then you got back to the UFC days. Uh, little Nog, ground and pound. Okay, we also went Little Nog. He retired. We got it. Little Latifi. Okay, he's at heavyweight, getting knocked out. Okay, got knocked out by Anthony Johnson. His only real win in the UFC, in my opinion, um, I mean, he lost to Glover Teixeira. He lost to Leo Machida, who's at 205 in Bellator. Let them rematch, right? Um, I mean, listen, look at this record. This record is not impressive to me. Phil Davis, Ovens is an okay win. Phil Davis, Rashad Evans was on the end of his career, but he's been knocked out by a lot of guys at 205. Check Kondo, no contest. Eye poke, whatever the fuck happened in that fight. So there's a lot going on with the Bellator versus UFC thing. And I think it's ridiculous because UFC has nothing to gain from it. Bellator has everything to gain. They have all the momentum. No one really knows outside of the hardcore fans and maybe very few casuals. Oh, trigger alert. Sorry for saying casuals. Doesn't really know Bellator, right? I am a hardcore fan and I probably couldn't name you the past five light heavyweight champions that Bellator had. I, I couldn't. I really couldn't. So it's surprising to me that a guy like Ryan Bader... Is being considered the best because John Jones left. John Jones didn't retire, right? He left to go to heavyweight, but not officially yet. So in that matchup, I really see only two close matches. I see Patricia Pipple having a close match with uh, Volkanovski, and then I see um, Douglas Lehman and Usman having a close match. Other than that, it's a clean sweep for the UFC. I think it's actually crazy that we're talking about this. It's actually crazy that I'm doing this video, but I got this cool new app, so I want to show it off. I need to get a green screen. I know it's a little fucking, little squirrely or whatever, but that's what it is, baby. Okay, so don't come at me about this whole UFC versus Bellator thing, okay? Because it's non-existent, it's not real, and that's it. Subscribe to the podcast, MMA Takes Podcast on iTunes, Spotify. Follow me on all social media, MMA Takes Podcast on Twitter, Instagram. Subscribe to the YouTube channel down below. Hit that little fucking button. I think I should supposed to do this at the beginning of the video. I'm doing it at the end of the video. Let's go!